It's Monday, the 26th of April. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And back on the 20th of an April, there was an unusual Learjet accident in Pampulha Airport, Belo Horizonte, Brazil. This airport is located about 200 miles or 320 kilometers north of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The accident aircraft was a 1976 Lear 35 aircraft, and this accident took the life of the instructor captain of the aircraft and severely injured the pilot in the left seat and injured a third person in the rear seats or in the seats behind the pilot. Getting the information from folks on a first-hand basis in Brazil, Blanco Lirio viewers, apparently what has happened in this accident the, the local airport there is runway 13 and 31. This Lear 35 was practicing touch and go, touch and goes. By the way, this Learjet is owned by a, it looks like a construction company. It's not a part 135 operation. They were practicing touch and goes. It seems like the senior captain in the right seat, a 76 year old gentleman was giving instruction from the right seat, teaching the younger, much younger pilot in the left seat, doing touch and goes on runway 13. By the way, the runway at Pampulha is about 7,700 feet long or about 2,300 meters. Plenty long enough for the touch and goes in the Learjet, but not a lot of room for error. After a series of touch and goes, they were on approach for another normal touch and go, but apparently, and this was caught on the security cam, and I'll show you in the video clip, they landed with the gear up. The gear was not extended. The gear was retracted. Now. As, as, as unusual and as odd as it sounds, remember the PIA incident, the Pakistan International Airlines incident in Karachi, Pakistan, which we're still waiting for a final report on. And more frequently in general aviation, the startle reflex, if you land your aircraft with the gear up on accident and it surprises you, you one of your first natural tendencies may be to attempt to go around. And that's apparently what happened in the case of this Learjet. About two thirds of the way down the runway was another group of pilots watching this accident happen. They observed the Learjet scraping along the runway with its gear retracted and the engines at full power. Well, of course, at three quarters of the way down the runway, they don't have enough runway left and off the end of the runway they went. Unfortunately, the end of the runway at this airport has a very steep drop off. But it did wrap itself around the tree and it did end up in the fatality of the senior captain in the right seat. So as unusual as it sounds, these types of accidents where a pilot lands with his gear up, is startled or surprised by that, and then attempts a go around to go around much too late. In these prop driven aircraft, you see this rather frequently where the prop comes back quite a bit shorter diameter <laughs> than it started out. So the best plan of action, of course, is to just go off the end of the runway slowly rather than go off the end of the runway at a high rate of speed. In other news here in the U.S., the Commemorative Air Force almost lost another DC-3 this weekend in Xenia, Ohio. A pair of DC-3s from the Commemorative Air Force were up celebrating a hundred year old World War II paratrooper veterans birthday and uh, when they were leaving the event the number two DC-3 D-Day Dolly had a little trouble getting the number one engine, the left engine, to do a proper run-up. They elected to depart anyways and when they pushed the power up for departure about the time they got the tail up they elected to abort the takeoff as the left engine was still not running correctly so good decision to abort the takeoff but in the process of aborting the takeoff they lost directional control of the DC-3 
and got off of the paved runway and into the grass off to the side of the runway. Remember again, the DC-3, that airfoil, it, you've got to get that tail up high before you can allow that airfoil to start flying on the DC-3. You've got to get the tail up high to get rudder authority on the DC-3, and then you've got to maintain that position until that wing is ready to fly. In the case of this abort, it looks like the tail was down pretty low, so they're kind of in that waffly area of minimal rudder authority, especially with the power off on the engines, and they they damn near lost directional control of the whole DC-3. So take a look at this video footage from Xenia, Ohio. to it yeah because that motor was that motor coughed three times while it was sitting over there yes that was aborted takeoff dude he about crashed her over there yes sir thanks so much for your support of this channel especially thanks so much for the folks on patreon that make this content possible i gotta pack up and head out to nebraska wayne nebraska this weekend if you're in the neighborhood we're going to be putting on a stole drag race in wayne nebraska this weekend if the winds permit we've got a 10 knot limit for crosswind and tailwind so i hope we're not going out there for nothing, and we'll hopefully see some good stole drag competition. We've got 22 aircraft signed up. Kevin Quinn's going to really try to make a go of this thing, and we will be once again back at the Reno Air Races if they have them this year in September. See you there. See you here.